On July 31st of 2020, this face made waves across the internet. Just two weeks earlier, its owner was the mastermind behind the largest hack in Twitter history, responsible for over $100,000 of stolen Bitcoin and 130 thieved Twitter accounts from the likes of Kanye West, Elon Musk, Bill Gates, Mr. Beast, former US President Barack Obama, and current US President Joe Biden. But this incident wasn't the first time this man, or more accurately, boy, was thrust into the internet spotlight. In today's episode of Minecraft Uncovered, we'll be taking a look at the story of Graham Ivan Clark, better known as OpenHCF, and the descent of a Minecraft YouTuber into fraud. Our story begins in 2013, years before Graham ever made his way into the Minecraft community. But the year was important, because even though he got his start much later, his background and community began here. Minecraft Hardcore Factions, better known as HCF. HCF was an offshoot of the Factions game mode that had appeared two years earlier on a server known as Massivecraft, where you built and raided massive bases in the pursuit of unrivaled wealth and power on your quest to become the largest faction in the world. The game mode was easy to get into and understand. Simply create a team, claim some land, build and protect your empire, and destroy all who stand in your way. But see, this last part is where HCF differed. Where raiding and factions largely consisted of shooting cannons into the defenses of a base to hopefully penetrate through, HCF raiding was based entirely around PvP, or player versus player combat, turning HCF servers into a highly competitive, often toxic, and sometimes shady environment, promoting what was once known as the most grueling and unforgiving game mode in all of Minecraft. Three years later, this is where Graham got his start. On August 24th of 2016, the OpenHCF YouTube channel was launched, where a 13-year-old Graham would upload content revolving around hardcore factions and competitive Minecraft combat on a variety of servers. But while he quickly gained an audience from a Minecraft account giveaway, his success didn't last long. Starting in October of 2016, less than two months after his channel opened, other members of the community began to expose Graham for shady practices behind the scenes, including faked giveaways, staged videos, racist and disrespectful behavior, scamming other players, stealing the personal information of his rivals and launching DDoS attacks on them, some pretty bad stuff for a Minecraft player who was, for all intents and purposes, a child. Open took aim at everyone, friends, enemies, fans and rivals, even those he worked with, and while he had a small community defending him at first, as the months went on and more accusations came out, Open's reputation was damaged beyond repair. By February of 2017, the Open HCF channel had gone inactive, and Graham himself, having been banned or blacklisted from nearly every server in the community, began to fade away, his memory withering in the minds of players that never really got a chance to know him in the first place. At the turn of the year, the channel was presumably sold or given away, receiving a spike in activity and rebranding to Juvoy, and Elias apparently belonging to a Fortnite creator for a short period of time before he too went inactive. In November of 2018, the last videos on the former OpenHCF channel were erased, going completely private, and in the middle of April 2019, the channel was suddenly wiped off of YouTube, never to be seen again. Graham, on the other hand, hadn't quite disappeared. Instead, he had simply shifted his focus, this time to a life of cybercrime. Graham's first ventures into the world of cybercrime were long before he participated in what's now known as the Bitcon Twitter hack of 2020. No, the first serious heirs of our good friend OpenHCF came back in 2018, just over a year after he was ousted from the Minecraft HCF community. That was when Graham joined an online marketplace known as OG Users, centered around the trading of OG online usernames essentially any screen name that was considered valuable because of its simplicity or visual appeal. These tended to be well-known English words, references to pop culture, or common first names. It was only natural that Graham would be attracted to a site like this. After all, Graham had owned the Minecraft names Open and Feed back in his HCF days, suggesting he was already somewhat familiar with the trade. But along with this niche collector's hobby was a criminal underworld involving the theft of not just rare names and accounts, 
accounts, but personal information, finances, and worse. Unfortunately for Graham, he quickly fell into the seedier part of the community and continued his descent into a world of crime. He was banned from the site after just four days, but he would continue to make connections with other members of the community and was pulled along with them on various criminal escapades leading to his first run-in with the law. Meet Greg Bennett. Greg has worked in the tech and health industries for the last 45 years, most famously as the founder of HBSI, the largest American hospital benchmarking company, and most recently as an angel investor, putting money into entrepreneurs and new companies with the money he made from his own ventures in exchange for partial ownership or some other benefit. But since 2017, Greg has also been involved with cryptocurrency, which made him a target. On April 15th of 2019, that target was hit. That was the day that a group of unknown hackers carried out a SIM swapping attack on Bennett, where bad actors stole access to his phone number before using it to request access to his private account on Bitfinex, a crypto exchange that held an estimated 400 Bitcoin. Due to slow acting on the part of the exchange, the hackers managed to drain 164 of the 400 coins, an amount worth a bit under a million at the time, but over six million dollars today. Of course, it doesn't have to be said, but among the hackers was Graham himself, who seems to have orchestrated the attack in the first place and attempted to extort the victim for even greater treasures. Bennett would go on to recover the accounts to the best of his ability, suing his exchange in the process, but it would be a full year before any of the attackers were apprehended. In April of 2020, exactly a year since the initial attack, the United States Secret Service seized 100 Bitcoin from Graham Ivan Clark, the man himself, and returned the currency to its rightful owner. A whopping 64 Bitcoin, or roughly 500,000 at the time, has gone unaccounted for. Graham was released because of his status as a minor, and any other potential hackers seemed to have evaded the authorities. But generally speaking, the case was as close to resolved as it would likely ever get, leaving Bennett, Bitfinex, and the Secret Service satisfied. But not Graham. By this time, Graham was already living well, with his own classy apartment in Tampa, the jewelry and vehicles of a celebrity, and more expensive tech in his home than most people will see in a lifetime. But he wanted more, and with a massive chunk of his stolen income drained from him, he would need to devise a new plan to satisfy his greed. Just two weeks later, Graham got to work on his largest heist yet. It was time to take on Twitter. On May 3rd, it began. Graham, acting alone, began a process of painstaking research into Twitter's behind-the-scenes staff. He spent weeks on weeks scraping LinkedIn, an online business network, for the profiles of Twitter employees that could potentially hold access to the admin panel. Then, he was able to use special job recruitment features on the site to find their phone numbers and other private information. Once their private info was saved, he moved on to the public sources, collecting as much data as he could from random sites and Twitter itself as to how the company functioned on the inside. And that was it. Graham had everything he needed. It was time for action. He started, simply enough, by calling the private numbers of Twitter employees and attempting to convince them he was part of the IT department, fixing a problem with the internal Twitter network. Remember, this was in the middle of COVID-19. Twitter employees weren't meeting at the coffee machine every day in the office, they were working from home, where it wouldn't be quite as easy to just walk up to a coworker and ask them what's up. Eventually, he managed to gain their trust, and that's where the plan moved to phase two. Here, Graham had set up a web page, the first of two, though the second is much more well known. This first page looked innocuous enough. To the untrained eye, it would probably look like nothing important, and to the trained eye of a Twitter employee, it would look like the company's own internal Twitter VPN. But to the most trained eye, at that time only Graham himself, it was a disguise behind which hid some basic code to steal the login info of Twitter staff as they entered it. Even the two-factor authentication Twitter had put into place wasn't enough to stop him. Graham moved their info from the fake site to the real one within seconds, before the one-time security code could expire. Once the employees were duped into dishing out their login, Graham was in. Immediately, he got to work with the first stage of the hack, the far simpler and easier of the two, which was the theft of OG one-character Twitter usernames. He recruited the aid of two members off OG users for this part, the first being Che Wan, real name Mason Shepard, and the second being Rolex, real name Nima Fazelli. 
Since Graham had been banned off of OG users, he needed someone to advertise his, shall we call them, services. Shaywan was in charge of that, and he did his job well, charging $250 per email behind a rare Twitter account and receiving at least two clients within the first eight hours. Rolex, on the other hand, seems to have been behind the finances of the scheme. His driver's license was used to register the Coinbase that held their profits. But clearly for Graham, this gig wasn't enough. Maybe the profits were small, maybe business was slow, maybe he thought time was running out before Twitter found out. But suddenly, for the mastermind of the Twitter hack, plans changed. At 3 o'clock Eastern, the Twitter account of the Binance Crypto Exchange suddenly sent out a new tweet. We have partnered with Crypto for Health and are giving back 5,000 Bitcoin to the community. But that was just the start, and over the next two or so hours, 130 accounts would be compromised, 45 of which were used to promote a scam promising to double any Bitcoin sent to a lone Coinbase address or through a Crypto for Health scam website launched earlier that day. From what we can tell, Chewan and Rolex were completely in the dark on this. Essentially, Graham went rogue, and Chewan and Rolex went ghost. It took three hours for Twitter to stop the hack in its entirety. By that time, Coinbase had already blacklisted the scam addresses, and over 3,000 tweets contained a mention of the scam. But despite the somewhat quick resolution, finding the perpetrators was not going to be as easy. It took over two weeks for the three to be connected with the hack. After a large-scale investigation by the FBI, the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, and the National Cybersecurity Center in the UK. But on July 31st, the Department of Justice announced the arrest of all three involved in the hack. Mason Shepard, or Shaywan, from the UK, charged with conspiracy to commit money laundering, multiple counts of conspiracy to commit wire fraud, and the intentional access of a protected computer. Nima Fazeli, or Rolex, got off quite easy with just the charge of aiding and abetting the access. Graham, however, as the ringleader, wasn't quite so lucky. Graham Ivan Clark has been charged with organized fraud over $50,000, accessing a protected computer without authority, 11 counts of identity theft, and 17 counts of communications fraud. He pleaded not guilty on August 4th of 2020, but by March, he accepted a plea deal requiring him to serve time as a youthful offender under Florida law. On April 5th of 2021, Graham Ivan Clark was admitted to the Lake City Correctional Facility of Florida, where he's serving time today. His release date is scheduled for February 24th, 2023. Hi, it's me, Aiden, or MCB, in a rare sort of one-on-one -on -one with the camera, or in this case, the Shure SM7B microphone in OBS. But basically, I just wanted to express a huge thanks to all of you. The channel has been doing phenomenally. My last few videos did really well, except for the ones that didn't, but that's fine. And uh, overall, the channel's in a really great spot. I'm super happy with it. I'm gonna try my best to keep consistent weekly uploads from now on. I know I have said that many times, but I had a sort of burst in motivation recently, and I spent like six hours a day just on the script for this video alone, and I suspect I'll probably spend the same amount of time on recording and editing because I really wanna get this up by Thursday, and it's Monday right now. Also, and I'm adding this in post, so sorry if my voice sounds different, but regarding the topic of this video in particular, there was a surprisingly good documentary made on Graham by the New York Times. It's a Hulu exclusive, but there's a re-upload on YouTube as well at the moment, so watch at your own risk. I'll leave the official link in the description. Stick around after the video as well. There's a few bonus clips of the Zoom calls for the hearings of Graham, Rolex, and Shaywan, which were all bombed on recording, and uh, it's pretty entertaining. But yeah, again, just wanted to say huge thanks for all the support. It's super motivating and very much appreciated, and uh, yeah, love you all, thanks for watching, and have a good one. Peace, peace. Hello, Your Honor. You smoking on the Remy pack? Please, uh, Can you hear me, Your Honor? Please, through Mike Moore, our, uh... Yo, Your Honor, go for a leg free, Mason! Go for all you in here! <laughs>
Mr. Clark did move him off of the BitMEX platform because anyone would go my slime. I know you really don't know, madam, like that. But I was wondering if like, I could purchase something still, fam. Just a bit of grub, my driller. I want to know like, what your price is saying because I'm trying to blend my zoo up with my boy, Dem and Galdem G. Like, you feel me? So get back to me because I know like, you're the top dog around here. Sorry, I'm, I'm removing people as quickly as I can whenever uh, a disruption happens, Mr. Weisbrod. No worries, understood. So.